Hey, Shanna Rowe Jackson here from Caution Arts at Play, and as you can see from my little intro, it is fall here in Maine. Well, it's fall in a lot of places, but um, normally my trees are a lot prettier, but they only got to like half change before we had this horrible windstorm. So like half my trees are like, they have no leaves on them, and then some of them have some pretty turned leaves, and then some of them are still green. So we're at a really awkward phase of fall, but I still thought that would be a fun little video clip. And since it's October, I thought that it would be a great time to draw a pumpkin. And you probably saw my video recently where I drew some blueberries with oil pastels. And that was my first time working with oil pastels probably since I was a kid, like in a serious manner. So I thought that this one would be fun to do in oil pastels as well because I really enjoyed my experience with my blueberries and it's definitely a medium I want to work with more. And so that's why I decided to do this one in oil pastels. And I am using... Um, this a different kind of paper than I used last time. Last time I used the Lux Archival and this one is the Art Spectrum Color Fix, I believe it's called. I got it from Jerry's Artorama. This is a paper that I got like a mix pack of years ago when I first started trying out soft pastels and it is a pastel paper and they have different surfaces. This one is slightly sanded and they have another one that's more like smooth and I've had it, I've had the mix pack in my studio forever and I haven't really ever tried it out and I ran out of my Lux Archival so I'm like, hey, let me try the sanded surface for oil pastels and it's pretty good but I definitely like the Lux Archival better. I'm not sponsored by any of the companies mentioned. These are just things that I had in my studio but I kind of, I definitely like the Lux Archival a little bit better. The surface was definitely more even and I don't know, it just was easier to get more layers, but this actually wasn't too bad for oil pastels. And it actually, it's a really archival paper too, because I tested the back for acidity and this one actually is good because I know there's a few of them out there that a lot of people like to use that they found out that the backside wasn't acid free, which I don't know why some companies do that. But I have a, a pen that tests for acidity and... I did it on the back of this paper and it was fine. So that was pretty exciting. But yeah, so I was trying this paper for the first time. And again, I'm not very experienced with the oil pastels. So I told myself this is just going to be a fun, loose project. I was working on this project in between another project that I'm working on of a deer where I am using the golden open acrylics because I am going to be reviewing those on my channel. Hopefully that video will be ready next week. But since the open acrylics are slow drying, I had some time while layers were drying and I thought that it would be fun to get another quick project in at the same time. So I started working on this one at the same time. And this one definitely went a lot quicker <laughs> than the other project. So basically I lay in my oil pastels first and then I just come in with colored pencil to help with the detail. And that seems to work really well for me, especially since I'm obviously more experienced in colored pencils. But I really love these oil pastels. These are the, I think they're the Van Gogh pastels. I'll link everything in the description and um, in case you want to see. It's the same pastels that I was using in my last pastel video. But yeah, so I thought this would just be a fun little thing to do. I'm working from a reference photo that I took last fall and I'm just going in and working on each section of the pumpkin kind of separately. I did a very blurry kind of grassy background and kind of out of focus just so I could have more focus on the pumpkin. And with this piece, the main focus is going to be on the lighting. So I have to really work on my shadowing because the way the sunlight was hitting the pumpkin when I took the reference photo, it was just like really kind of a stunning contrast, which really excited me about this image. And later on, I do go in and add like a black vignette around the background, which I really end up loving, but I don't think I have that on camera, but it was really easy. All I did was just take my black oil pastel and kind of blur it around the edges to darken it up. And it worked really well with the shadow that ends up being on the pumpkin. And if you follow me on Instagram or on Facebook, then you have probably already seen this finished drawing. And if you're not following me on those social media sites, um, 
if you would like to see more of my artwork, you can definitely follow me there. I have the links in the description. I'm pretty much caution artist at play across the board. So if you want to follow me and see some of my artwork before it ends up on the channel, there's also sometimes I post artwork that doesn't even end up making it on my channel. So if you're interested in seeing more of my work, feel free to find me on Facebook and on Instagram because then you would have already seen this piece a little while ago. And so I basically, I just wanted a nice relaxing piece where I don't have to stress out about perfectionism because I tend to be a perfectionist. And my other piece that I'm working on, as I mentioned, it's of a deer and I have never drawn, I mean, I feel like I have drawn deer before, but I was, again, it was back when I was a kid. So, like, in recent years, I have never, like, drawn or painted a deer. So, it's definitely very new to me. Plus, I'm working with a medium that I had never worked with before. And, I mean, I'll talk more about that in that video. But this was definitely the nice stress relief that I was looking for. That's one reason why, like, I really am enjoying playing around with oil pastels because they're just so fun to work with. You can smear them around with your hands and it just kind of brings you back to childhood. And this subject kind of brought me back to childhood as well. I wanted it to feel really nostalgic. That was another reason why the lighting was important because I just wanted it to kind of feel like a memory and that's why I added the vignette and it just really fell together a lot more easily than some of my other projects because I kind of let go a little bit and just allowed myself to have fun and to just let it be what it is. And there's such an immediacy with oil pastels that allows for that. And so I definitely, I'm really, really liking this medium a lot. I want to get a larger set of these though because some of the reason why I ended up having to use my colored pencil was because I didn't have the right colors that I needed to put in the shadows of the pumpkin. And basically, I am basically just using, I don't know how many times I'm going to say basically, <laughs> but I am using mostly like magentas and purples and some greens to make the shadows on this orange pumpkin because they're really like complementary colors to the orange that's in there. And so it's really a great way to kind of shade oranges and yellows is by using like purples and to use, you know, colors that complement the colors that make up the color that you're shading. <laughs> That's awful. Man, I am... Ooh. <laughs> this is quite a voiceover and I apologize for that. I hope that made sense to you. I, it made sense in my own mind, but here we are. Basically... <clears throat> When all else fails, use complementary colors. I didn't use straight up blue to shade the pumpkin though because it graded out a little too much. So that's why I used near complements that were sort of closer to what my color was. So orange has red in it and I decided I would use a purple color because it also has red in it. So it kind of marries those together. The reds in those two colors will blend well together without making a gray, but the purple also has the blue in it that is going to offset the orangey tones. And so it ended up working out really well. And complementary colors are the ones that are opposite each other on the color wheel. And there's just so many different ways to work with those colors to make things work. Whether you want to make colors pop or you want to gray them down and just working with complementary and near complementary colors, you can get a huge range of all kinds of different fun shading that still remains colorful. I definitely didn't use black to shade this pumpkin. It probably would have just looked like a muddy mess had I done that. And so for the upper shadows, I used more of the purples. And then as it got closer to the ground, I used a little bit of green to kind of offset things and to gray it out a little bit more because there's going to be like some reflections of the grass as it gets lower to the ground. And then I come through with my white and I kind of do some highlights. And later on, I come through with my white pencil as well and kind of like burnish a little bit to smooth things out. The video footage makes things look a little bit sharper and a little bit almost messier than it actually is. You'll see in the scan at the end that the colors end up meshing together a lot better and smoothing out more naturally than it looks on the video footage. 
So at the end, you'll see the scan, which is more accurate. And there is a little bit of touch-ups that I did off camera. I tend to have a touch-up phase where when I scan and get a different view of it, I end up doing more touch-ups. And that never ends up being on camera because I'm not in my studio when I'm doing it. And it just, like, I'm just going back and forth so much. It's part of my process. Um, and so some of the smoothing out process happened during that time as well. And then I'm just going in and working on the stem. For the stem, I end up just coming in with my white pastel as a base. And then I come in with my colored pencils to do most of the detail because the stem is rough. So I want to have some crags and some fine lines in there and some rough texture. And I actually end up letting some of the texture of the sanded paper show through without covering it completely because there's a roughness on that stem. And it ended up lending itself really well to that. But this was just such a fun project, and I love f doing festive things, and I love being inspired by the different seasons. That's one reason why I like living where I live, because we get all four distinct seasons. Well, I say distinct, but <laughs> really winter kind of takes over, which I'm not impressed with. Fall is my absolute favorite, but it's not long enough. It really isn't. Winter likes to creep in on fall and stay longer than it should. And so our fall and our spring seasons are quite precious when we have them because they're, they're very short. Weather-wise, they're very short. And a lot of times we don't even have a spring. It goes straight from winter to, to summer, which is sad. But fall time is just so unique. I love all the warm colors. It, I love the cool, crisp air. And it's just really exciting. I will probably end up doing another fall piece before winter, hopefully. I have some projects lined up, and so I'm hoping I'll have time to do more fall stuff before winter comes, and then I will hopefully be doing some Christmas-inspired stuff. Just going through, like I mentioned before, with those details. I'm using mostly my polychromos to do the details because they work really well on sanded paper. But I also come in with a little bit of the Derwent drawing because they have such a like natural color to them. And they're almost like a like clay kind of consistency. I don't know how to explain it. But they work really well with the oil pastels as well. And so you'll see me going back and forth between those kinds of pencils. And this stem doesn't look exactly like it did in the reference photo, but it doesn't have to. Like, it's, you know, it's not going to be exact. Like I said, I tried to loosen up a little bit. Mainly, I put some blues in the shadows of that stem because it is a sunny day. And so there's going to be some blues in the shadows, especially on something that's nearly white, because the sky was blue. And so that's going to reflect in the shadows of things. Plus, I really wanted to complement the orange again. And I love the way the green complements the orange as well. Because again, there's red in the orange and so that's going to complement it. Going in with some of my browns and more natural colors. I really thoroughly enjoyed this. I can't, I'm so surprised that I have been liking the oil pastels as much as I have. All right, and here is the final piece. I hope that you like it. As you can see, I kind of added that little vignette and I just think it brought the whole thing together and I just love it. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like what you see, please hit subscribe. Also, if you're interested in seeing more of my artwork, I'm on social media. So check out the links in the description below.